this is Dr. John Cummins. I'd like to introduce you to some of the principles upon which we build our practice in secular medicine, secrets to longevity. But firstly, what do we know about the current state of our health? We are living longer. However, some recent data suggests that lifespan is decreasing, certainly for some, par some parts of the US, in particular for women. We're living with chronic illness. Typically, we have seven years of disability before death, and we also know that 85% of chronic illness is preventable. There are some worrying signs. Recently, in 2014, there have been some data showing that there's early presentations of bowel cancers with people in their 20s. The uh, highest mortality for breast cancer in women is in their 40s, and there's a rise in incidence of breast cancer in women that may be obesity-related. Uh, in fact, most women don't know that uh, alcohol is said to be uh, internationally related to 10% of all breast cancers throughout the world. More than 100 mils of alcohol per night is a risk factor. The other thing is that most men and women don't get a warning sign before their first heart attack or stroke. Whilst we think we may get chest pain or you know, perhaps slurred speech or weakness down one side of the body in the case of a stroke, what we do know is that 62% of men and 46% of women won't have any warning. They'll either have sudden death or they'll present with a blocked artery and uh, in some instances it can be too late to either salvage the brain or salvage the heart muscle. So it's important to try and pick these things early. The uh, death rates in women are at every age, more women actually die of heart disease and breast cancer as you can see from the graph here and particularly post-menopause women seem to get much more hypertension and therefore stroke risk than men and women's heart attack rate beyond the age of 65 really starts to take off. And don't forget, it's not your arteries at 65 that are the only thing that counts. It's what your arteries were like before you got to that stage that set you up for that high risk that's important. So in executive medicine, what do we focus on? We focus on heart attack and stroke risk because that really will ultimately uh, kill 40% uh, of us. 30% of us will ultimately die from a cancer. The commonest for both genders is lung cancer. Second commonest is colon cancer. And in fact, if you get to the age of 85, one in 12 of us will have a colon cancer, if not screened and checked for beforehand, followed by prostate cancer, which kills more men than breast cancer kills in women, lymphoma and melanoma. Now, all of these uh, cancers, these common cancers of the right-hand side can be screened for or checked with physical examinations. And more recently, there's data showing that melanoma screening with an annual health check reduces the death rate from melanoma. The other 30% of all is a variety of other causes. And it's really important, therefore, that you have an excellent medical practitioner that you can access at short notice so that should you become unwell with these other sort of illnesses, um, which could include mental health, suicide, um, accidents, but more importantly, other chronic illnesses such as chronic kidney disease, that this can be treated with the best care and the best available specialists around. So really the big ones to focus on that are preventable or detectable at an early stage is heart attack, stroke and cancers. These things have a lag period of several years before they declare themselves and in that several years if you look for them and you find them you can do something about them and uh, either save lives or certainly save significant periods of illness, hospitalisation and financial expense. So what's the pathway to uh, exceptional health? Well, there are several groups around the world, such as the Okinawans, the Seventh-day Adventists in, the California, in California, and the Sardinians, where uh, a significant proportion of uh, people reach a ripe old age but functionally behave like the 20, 30 years they're uh, junior. And in fact, the uh, karate instructor on the right-hand side is aged over 90. The Okinawan study is a 700 centenaries. You can prove because they've kept excellent uh, records that these people actually are over 100 years of age. Their minds are lucid, their bodies are slim, their movements are fluid, their health is superb for their years. So 700 people over the age of um, 100 have been studied on an ongoing basis to see, well, look, what can we learn from them? Is this something that we can uh, take from their uh, lifestyle to really affect our, um, our lives so that we can live to over 100 and yet be functionally 30, 40 years younger? They actually, when you investigate them, have lower biomarkers of vascular disease and aging. They've got a lower blood sugar level, lower cholesterol, a homocysteine, which is involved in uh, folic acid um, uh, metabolism and B12 metabolism, and ultimately can cause premature arterial disease, if not um, within the normal range. Lower blood pressure, lower um, uh, androgens or steroids, DHEA, 
and lower free radicals. Their bodies don't seem to age. Their death rate from, from heart disease, cancers and stroke is only 60 to 70 percent of the Japanese average. And compared to Americans, they have a strikingly 80 percent less breast cancer and prostate cancer and less than half of their in colon cancers. They actually have the world's longest disability-free life expectancy. And what that means is, you know, whilst we may have seven years of chronic illness, typically before we die, the Okinawans have under two years of chronic illness. So they really have superb health right until the end when um, ultimately uh, they, they pass on, but without lots of disability beforehand. So what do they do? They have a high flavonoid intake. Flavonoids are biochemical substances found within certain food groups, and that would include citrus fruits, berries, pulses, uh, onions, parsley, tea, red wine, and dark chocolate. They are thin, they are lean, they've got an average body mass index that's much, much thinner than the average American. In fact, these are one of the few races that actually get thinner as they age. One of the reasons they do this, do this is culturally they, they follow a, uh, a habit where once they feel they are about 80% full, they stop eating because most of us would know that it takes 20 minutes from uh, the time that we actually get full so that the appropriate hormones can trigger the brain to say, look, stop eating now. But in that 20 minutes, we keep on eating. They have a high level of incidental physical activity. They typically don't go to gyms, but they market garden. They do their own exercise at home. They walk to the, 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 the gardens. They have a massive soy intake. And they also have a strong sense of community. Uh, and in fact, um, I've read that uh, once an Okinawan is born, they are then placed with a number of other babies the same age. So when these people get to 100, they've often lived their 100 years with other people within their village, within the community, and hence don't suffer the loneliness that some of our very old people seem to have because they're actually placed with babies their own age and they grow up with them. Their food pyramid is different to the, uh, the Western food pyramid in that uh, the, the basis of their food pyramid is vegetables, um, whole grains, so not white rice, not white noodles, not white bread so much, but uh, beans and other whole and, and, and whole grains. Lots of fish, lots of um, uh, fruit, lots of um, healthy green vegetables there, and uh, very, very little uh, meat, poultry, and eggs, either none per week, or perhaps one serving per week. The, so what you would ask, well, what about ge genetics? Gen genetics only explains probably 30% of their health outcomes. 70% would be lifestyle related. And what one notices if, is if the Okinawans move to Western culture, typically they go to Brazil or to Canada, their health outcomes match the Westerner within their lifetime. So really within a period of, of, of a decade or two, they can reverse this uh, wonderful effect of anti-aging they have because of their, their, uh, their diet, their activity, in the sense of community and uh, sadly the current generation seems to be following the western disease patterns rather than their forefathers. The, uh, the Seventh-day Adventists in, in California, the uh, Sardinians in Italy, they all uh, have subgroups where they can live an old age and again if you look at that graph here you can see that they uh, most of this is dietary but there's some common threads within all three groups which is social engagement, lots of legumes. We, we don't tend to eat many legumes, uh, certainly in Western countries. Uh, legumes would be, uh, for example, uh, beans, uh, lentils, uh, chickpeas. Um, they have predominantly plant-based diet. They don't smoke. There's a strong, strong emphasis on family and constant moderate physical activity. Um, they, um, uh, this is highlighted in this slide here, which I've just spoken to. There's also, um, interestingly, a Honolulu Heart, Pro Heart Program, a Honolulu Asia Aging Study. Uh, this is interesting because it was, it was male only. Um, I haven't seen anything for, for females, but they started tracking these men at the age of 54. And what they were interested in was, was how many got to, uh, in their 90s or certainly over 85, in exceptional health, which is defined as no diabetes, cancer, heart disease, stroke, no Alzheimer's, no lung disease, no dementia or Parkinson's disease. And what they found that the health factors that predicted uh, a lack of these illnesses were being lean with a body mass index of less than 25, a strong grip strength. So the problem is that they were strong throughout their body. But if when they squeezed their hand, they could measure how strong they were. That was predicted with a low blood pressure, um, low uh, blood markers of, of um, or, or lack of obesity. So if you're lean, you tend to have low triglycerides, glucose and uric acid. They had a low hemoglobin. They'd never smoked, low alcohol. 
a high education. So most of these people got to, uh, to beyond high school. And, and actually these men, they were, they were married as well, was a predictive factor. So if you had none of these risk factors, you had a 40% chance of having exceptional health with none of these chronic diseases at over the age of 80. If you had six or more of these risk factors, you actually had a 1 in 50 chance of survival and exceptional health. So all of these risk factors, uh, predominantly aside from perhaps the marriage and the education, are really lifestyle choices in terms of uh, what you eat, how lean you are, uh, and how strong you are. Is it too late for me? Well, what we do know is that uh, cardiovascular disease, as an example, probably starts in childhood in our culture and then presents through middle age. Um, it's asymptomatic, then at some stage something triggers a, a, a rupture of, of some gooey stuff inside the wall of the artery and then you have your heart attack or stroke. But uh, heart disease risk can change suddenly. If you look at this slide here, you will see that in the 1990s, Poland had a dramatic decrease in heart attack. What was it? It was the fact that uh, up until the 1989 um, fall of, of, I guess, communism, uh, the Polish government subsidised animal fats in the diet, and so they were cheaper. But once communism uh, became more a capitalist society, the subsidies for animal fats in the diet stopped. People then were forced to eat more cheap vegetable oils, more fruit and vegetables, um, less fat, and, and the, the heart attack rate within five years dramatically decreased. And that's very, I think, empowering and very uh, uh, you know, encouraging that we can actually reduce our heart attack risk within a few short years just by changing our diet. The other uh, interesting uh, uh, bit that I often speak to is a small study with Professor, Professor Dean Ornish. And, and he was famous in the early 1980s with a small study that showed that significant massive lifestyle changes can certainly slow down uh, coronary artery disease. And uh, what he's published uh, fairly recently in 2008 was a small study a pilot study it was quite interesting where people with prostate cancer made a significant lifestyle change in terms of uh, eating a, a plant-based diet, uh, less than 10% fat, uh, exercising, stress management for an hour a day, group therapy, um, and um, uh, what the, 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 the microscopically within their prostate cancer, the, the, these disease-preventing genes were switched on with these lifestyle changes with, with, um, compared to, to pre-lifestyle. So there were biopsies done of the prostate cancer pre and post the lifestyle. They, they turned off genes within the prostate tissue that promoted cancer and heart disease. And they lengthened uh, telomerases on chromosomes, which are linked to uh, essentially how long we live. These are the aging parts, the chromosomes. Uh, their, their PSA fell, their tumour size decreased on MRI scanning and so really what it seemed to show was that we can influence cancer growth by uh, significant uh, more healthy lifestyle changes. Um, and there's a summary of essentially what the, um, uh, the three month comprehensive lifestyle modifications were. So what do we know about stress? Well. Stress um, is certainly influenced by our environment, and, uh, uh, and I think this is a fascinating study where they showed that uh, in 2006, when the uh, Germans had a World Cup, every time there's a critical game, as evidenced by the red lines with the numbers, uh, whether the Germans won or lost, it didn't matter. More Germans presented to hospital with heart attacks in times of acute um, uh, stress with the, the soccer games. We know that uh, chronic stress at work uh, essentially predisposes one to uh, abdominal obesity um, and, and this is independent of diet and, and smoking and exercise. It seems that the work stress itself basically uh, essentially alters our metabolism. The cortisol probably leads to central obesity, lays down plaque in our arteries. We um, also get reduced heart rate variability, so that means that our sympathetic nervous system is switched on. Cortisol is raised with stress that reduces the healthy protective HDL cholesterol, makes your body more resistant to insulin, predisposes you to obesity and therefore diabetes and heart attack. Marital stress in women, if, if a woman uh, experiences stress in a marriage and, and she's got coronary artery disease, she does worse than women that are happy within marriage. And so basically we know that stress really affects our physical health. What about exercise? Fitness. If, if, if one is fit, you get a decreased risk of coronary disease by up to 50%. It prevents or reduces blood pressure and stroke. It reduces colon cancer by up to 50%. It 
reduces diabetes, uh, healthy joints, and certainly is very, very powerful in preventing and treating depression or anxiety. And for all of these chronic conditions uh, listed at the bottom of the graph, uh, hypertension, COPDs, emphysema, diabetes, smoking, being obese and having high cholesterol, if you are fit, which is the left-hand bar versus the, in the dark grey versus the very light grey right-hand bar, which is very unfit, the relative risk of death with all of these conditions is dramatically reduced. So fitness is very, very protective and exercise is very, very protective for longevity even within these chronic health conditions. So, you know, what, what do we need to do to have great health? We need a plant-dominant diet, a Mediterranean-dominant diet. We can, we can future-proof or reduce our risk of heart attack by following this diet by up to 30%. And this is published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2013. And certainly you can contact us and we can forward the diet to you. Uh, it's actually fairly straightforward. It's not hard to follow, it's just really healthy eating. Exercise and stress management. How do people manage their stress? Social connection, as, as uh, evidenced by the Opka Nouns and, and the Seventh Day Adventists and Sardinians. So, really having a good um, a circle of friends and, and a network of, of colleagues that uh, essentially will support you emotionally through the difficult periods that we all have in life. A sense of mindfulness is very protective for stress management, and you can train in mindfulness, you can train in meditation and, and being more present in the here and now. A sense of appreciation of what we do have um, and a sense of gratitude for things that are all good ways of managing stress and of course exercises as well. So the Mediterranean diet, this is a, a, a picture of what, it, what it, it, it does look like. I'd like you to notice the olive oil in, in the background, uh, the nuts, the seeds, the fish, the green leafy vegetables and particularly the plant food in abundant portions. So let's say you've got to the age of 40, 50, you've had a a Western upbringing with a with a typical Western diet with you know really a lot of carbohydrates, too few plant foods, um, not terribly healthy grains, maybe a lot of white bread, white rice, uh, maybe too much meat, and certainly if you've had processed meat such as ham, uh, salami, uh, which are directly carcinogenic, and you may say, oh gee, I wonder what sort of damage I've done now. Well, I think the main thing is to look for early markers of cancers and heart disease before it's too late. Before you know, we want to be able to find it before you notice you've got it. Because as an example, if you have a colonoscopy and you have a precancerous polyp removed, that um, basically has avoided you having a cancer because left unchecked, that polyp typically over five to seven years will declare itself as a cancer. However, if you don't get your, your uh, colon cancer risk uh, assessed um, either through a colonoscopy or even, even uh, just with a stool test, uh, if you wait till you have symptoms of colon cancer, 50% of people are dead within two years. Uh, we can look for evidence of blocked pipes or plaque in the arches. We, we, look at, we, we generate a, a, a five-year cardiac risk. It's a very simple algorithm. And sometimes we do CT angiograms and we typically do stress testing on people. Uh, bowel cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer and, and uh, skin cancer, typically melanoma. You, you can uh, check with it decent physical examination. So the questions I'll, I'll put to the audience uh, is when was the last time you had a, a thorough preventative health check which which you know generally takes at least 60 minutes uh, typically 90 to 120 minutes. What are you doing now to minimize your risk of a medical catastrophe in terms of diet exercise and stress management? Do you know what your your recent results are for blood pressure, blood sugar level, fitness, triglycerides etc. You should because as a cardiologist uh, once said, no, no one's coronary arteries or no one will, will be more concerned about or should be more concerned about your coronary arteries as an example as you should. Um, are you following the Mediterranean diet? Uh, with uh, with uh, a, a recent uh, screening, just certainly within the, the practice, we, we had a 45-year-old man that had a ruptured cardiac valve. He came to surgery and no idea. It was just on a physical examination. We we could hear the murmur. He, he just uh, had no idea that this was that this had happened to him. And certainly, I think if he hadn't found it out, he would have been a lot worse. Um, recently, a 55-year-old man had, was found to have a dilating aorta. That's a risk of rupture and sudden death. Uh, he uh, he's being sorted out now as to um, uh, what's the plan for this this man under the care of a cardiothoracic surgeon now. A uh, 44-year-old man late uh, in 2013 came to us in a routine stress test. It was abnormal. 
he had a virtually complete occlusion of a significantly a key coronary artery and uh, I've no doubt that if that um, had not been found he, he would have uh, died suddenly. Um, we found early melanomas, uh, cysts on the cervix. So just through physical examination, some careful uh, listening and, and investigating, uh, we uh, will often find people that are sitting on, on problems that they don't know about. Uh, you can also turn your, your life around. We, we had an accountant who, who lost uh, seven kilograms, his triglycerides plummeted, his, his protective HDL uh, went up uh, by probably 80%, which is really going to protect him from future coronary disease. His liver function test dropped dramatically, lost his fatty liver, his fitness went up dramatically. Most importantly, uh, not only has he done a great job of turning his risk factors around, but he's much more productive. He's dropped his hours working day from 13 down to 8, just feel very, very fit. So in summary, what, what works, uh, what we know works um, in, in the, the selected non-Western populations that have been studied, but I must say the, the Seventh-day Adventists are the only group within a Western population that um, have been shown to have exceptional health as well. So it does occur in Western populations. It's a plant-based diet, lots of movement, sense of connection and, and, and stress management. Um, and in Western cultures, uh, you know, we may have done some damage to our bodies already from childhood. We can check it. We can turn it around. And, and really, there's no reason why you shouldn't live to over the age of 85 in great shape with thorough expert health checks, Mediterranean diet, exercise and stress management. So I'd like to thank you for listening into this uh, a brief talk and uh, I hope it's been uh, beneficial for you all. Any questions you have, please contact us here at Executive.